listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, the show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. Oh, you already know what time it is. Perfect. A E Dub. A E Dub coming to you live from Indiana. And we had, I wouldn't call it a middle of the road show, but we had a good show. We had a good show, and I'm not going to sit here and call it otherwise. So, with that being said, as always, hit the goddamn like button. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. What's the wrestling? Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Also, Spotify and Anchor coming at you. And if you want to follow me, Play some video games, RJDTV2 on Twitter, RJDTV on YouTube and Facebook. Also, RJD199 on the Twitter for all my wrestling comments here or there. Let us not waste any more time. Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. It's I, RJD, here. We have a relaxed RJD here tonight, sitting back in the chair. Actually, we're going to move this up. Hold on. We're going to scoot up just a little bit. We got ourselves a relaxed RJD here. Y'all know how it go. We're just chilling and relaxing. And you know what? I think I want to put this over here today. I'm going to put this over here today. That's what we're going to do. Oh, there we go. We're going to put this over here. We got lights on. Mask on. We got the lights on. It looks totally different from one camera to the next. It's so weird. But anyway, RJD here. What the wrestling. We have we have ourselves an AEW Dynamite yesterday in Indiana. Good show. Story progression. We got a lot going on. And uh, I just want to shout out uh, Mr. Swerve. You'll see why when we get to it. First things first, we opened up with the orange one. <laughs> Excuse me. We opened up with the orange one. Orange Cassidy basically came out and said, listen, they told me to stay home. I'm not going to. I'll be back every week. And I don't have a catchphrase. Shout out to the orange one. On his way out, Mr. Moxley came in further. Mr. Moxley came in with Claudio further moving that storyline forward. He fought AR Fox in a fun little match and he beat him. So, <laughs> so shout out to him. Shout out to him. AEW Intercon uh, intern as I almost said Intercontinental. You hear me? Stupid. AR Fox. AEW International Championship match. It was a good match. He gave AR Fox a lot of offense in this match, which surprised me. Uh, I did not expect him to get as much offense as he did. We had a uh, pick it up at the end with a 450 splash. Mox kicks out, responds with the elbow strikes as always. Block the King Kong Lariat, but he goes for it again and he lands the King Kong Lariat and then ends it off with a Death Rider and calls it a day. And then after the match, Darby Allen showing respect to AR as they fade to black and move right along. Next, we had Chris Statlander versus Emi Sakura. Not going to lie to you, this might have been one of the best 8 to 10. What, what we had? 8 minutes, 10 minutes, 8, 10 minutes Statlander matches I've seen. This match was fantastic. This match was fantastic. Hard hitting, fast, fast paced. This is uh, Isaac's kind of match right here. Isaac always said, listen, man, I don't want to hear that shit. They're not doing enough. I don't care. 
shout out to Isaac, man. But at the end of the day, these ladies uh, don't know who Emmy Emmy is, but Emmy is really good, hard hitting. They told a great story, and I love this match was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, she got a little bit too confident at the end. Statline they picked her up onto the shoulder, face planted her, and then hit the huge clothesline with the and then beat her with the Wednesday night fever. You know, if it's Saturday night, Saturday night fever. If it's Friday night, it's Friday night fever. So she hit her with the Wednesday night fever. Called it a day. Roderick Strong was backstage. Roderick Strong was backstage talking about how his parents were alcohol. Uh, his father had drug issues and being an alcoholic, and he came up rough, basically saying, and you know that they were holding his leg and they patted him on the shoulder. <laughs> it was like, it was like, oh, stop it, get some help. And he said he's gonna win the tournament, and Adam Cole already knew everything that he had went through. He cares more about somebody else's MJF's freaking neck than he does his neck, and he's not too happy about that. So, at the end of the day, I can't wait for for this story to continue and culminate. I'm all for it. Story progression. Next, we have less sex guys versus Aussie, 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 Aussie Open. This was a fun match. Jericho wins with the Judas effect, but not before. He knocked Sammy Guevara off the apron by accident, of course. And there was a fun little back and forth with Fletcher. Fletcher attempted a roll up, but it didn't work. And he got hit with a wicked Judas effect. And that was all she wrote. The sex gods get the win. But Jericho tries to raise his hand with Sammy Guevara. And he was having none of that. Nope. He was like, listen, man, you hit me again. What's going on? Is there dissension with the sex guards? Most likely. Sammy Guevara said, Fuck this shit, I'm out. And took his ball and went home. So, love the story progression here. Jericho, JES left him. Don Callis tried to weasel his way into everything. And Don Callis was out there for ringside. So, Don Callis and Jericho, this stuff is not done. So, this middle of the road uh, story, this. This is going to have layers upon layers with the Takeshita, Omega, Don Callis stuff, Don Callis and Omega. He said Omega hasn't won a singles match since he left them. If that's true, first of all, but if that's true, perfect. this is perfect storytelling. I made you Kenny by God Omega and you haven't won a damn thing without me. And I don't know if that's true if he hasn't won since Don Callis left, but I mean a singles match, not a trios match. Uh, see now he's gonna make me research it to see if he was just talking crap or if it's true. But Don Callis and Takeshita were shown backstage with Renee Park. Ka Ka Callis says Takeshita is the new gold, is the new god, is the new god of pro wrestling. And next week, they will reveal Takeshita's next target. Maybe it'll be John Moxley, but I doubt it. I doubt it. Because Takeshita needs a title. Man. Well, he doesn't need a title. Let me not say that. But Takeshita is going to be... Woof, he's going to be a problem. MJF then makes his way to the ring. And he talked about... Tony Khan made me wrestle again? Come on, man. Like, what, what's, what's wrong with you, man? Nope. But then he said that 20th is Grand Slam. And said he's coming back to New York, which is his home. He's from Long Island, if I'm not mistaken. And he said, there's one person who might be there and needs to be taught a lesson. And out comes Samoa Joe. Big boy Joe comes out and says, listen, that's for a lad. I'm out here. You're out here. What's the problem, kid? And MJF says, Joe, you must confuse your entrance for an ice cream truck. And Joe says the last time he had anything to do with ice cream truck, he was busy being the biggest star on the other company's network. And then once again, MJF says, uh, Joe says, what is your problem with me, kid? MJF then takes some cheap shots of his own at Joe, calling him uh, Fat fat Boy Joe, Pillsbury Joe, uh, Doughboy, Joe Boy, whatever. <laughs> and Joe sat there and took it. 
And then he said if he calls him kid again, he's going to knock Joe's teeth down his throat. MJF says Joe wants to skip the line, but there's a whole tournament. MJF said, listen, who's ready for a story time with MJF, baby? So he says, he told the story about how he was pulled to the side by William Regal when he was 19. And he went crazy and he was good. And Regal said, listen, send me your tapes every month so I can see your progress. And we all know how that story ended. But he said he had the chance to go out with Samoa Joe for his match at the other company. Some place he, someone he looked up to, uh, some place that he looked up to, someone that he looked up to. Why well, I keep saying some place? Stupid. Someone that he looked up to and he was like, Joe pushed him into a brick wall. And he said, he was talking about Regal. He said the last time somebody messed with me, he had them... Uh, he knocked him out, packed him up, and had him shipped back to NXT. And he said, he's going to do the same to you, Mr. Samoa Joe. And everybody was like, he fucked up. Talking about William Regal passing on him. He fucked up. And he, Joe takes the mic and he says, listen, I didn't think you were a kid back then. I didn't think you weren't good. I didn't think you were great. I pushed you into that wall because I thought you was a little biatch. <laughs> Just bring it, bitch! And... He holds up the title, but MJF low, uh, and then he tells, he tells MJF, listen, I know there's a tournament. I know there's things going on. I'm not going to have you bait me. So what I'm going to do is I'll get my hands around your throat. I'm going to demolish you. But until then, you can leave. He goes to leave, and of course, Joe beats, beats him across the back and the neck. Then he hits Joe in the huevos. <laughs> he hits Joe in the cojones. Bruh. And then they begin to fight. But then he... J MJF is going for a clothesline in the corner. But he gets hit with a huge urinagi. And he's going for the muscle buster. But Adam Cole, baby, comes down and makes the save. And MJF is really selling his neck, man. He's like, ah, ah, my neck. Oh, my God. And everybody's booing. Everybody's upset. Nope. And... Stop it. Get some help. They were helping him out. And as he's walking to the back, Roger Strong says, Adam, Adam. It was extremely weird. I was just like, wait, what? Why would you do that? Stop the cap. Adam. He just kept saying Adam. Very weird. So he comes out and he says, you care about this guy's neck more than you care about my neck. He's like, listen, man, I'm going. That's my friend. I'm going. He's like, screw you. And they end up having some choice words. Roderick Strong goes to the ring, takes off the neck brace, proceeds to fight a 15-minute match, and then after the match, puts the neck brace back on. Wait, what? Damn, son. <laughs> I thought your neck was hurt, brother. He had a fight with Trent, which was really, really good. He had a fight with Trent. Uh, Trent loses to the end of Heartache by Roderick Strong, but I'm like, you put the neck brace back on, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with your neck. Stop it. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> we don't believe you, man. Stop the cap. So, this was really good. Nothing wrong here. Backstage, Tony Storm talked to Renee Paquette. She said she doesn't remember doing anything to Ruby Soho, costing her a title win. But she said, listen, uh, we're going to have chin up, tits out, and watch out for the shoe. And then she throws a shoe at her as she goes off the camera. Now, I love what Tony Storm is doing. I think it's awesome. I think it's going somewhere. I don't know where. I like uh, crazy Tony Storm. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Hopefully, they tell a good story here. Soraya is the champ right now. I don't know what they're going to do, but shout out to Soraya for having that moment. And I hope Soraya continues to do what she needs to do. And listen, let's get her some notable wins. Let's get her in some notable wins. Let's get her in some notable matches. Let's have her beat some credible people. Because maybe uh, Miss, Miss Jamie Hayer comes back and beats the holy hell out of her. And then Britt Baker stops her from getting the title. I don't know. They could go a multitude of ways with this. But I hope they keep it smooth. Because I'm liking this Tony Storm stuff. Then we had Adam Page comes out and talks about his future. But he is interrupted. And he was talking about the Chicago Education Fund. But he is interrupted by Swerve. 
And I was just like, wait, what? Surprise, motherfucker. Whose house? Swerve's house. So I was confused because I'm like, why is Swerve interrupting the hangman? So he went on to talk about basically the gist of this is he thinks hangman has gotten comfortable. He said, listen, you went and show he a strong line here. He was like, you went and signed the contract extension and you got real comfortable and it shows. And he pointed right to hangman's gut. Now, hangman is a big boy. He's he's about my height. He might be a little taller than me, actually. Hangman's about six twenty six two, and hangman, you know, he's. You know, he's got some muscle on him, but Hangman is looking a little soft around the, around the midsection. Maybe too too much of that cowboy shit going on. <laughs> but, you know, he has a new wife and he has a new kid. So, well, not a new kid. This kid is a little bit older now. Uh, about a, maybe around two. So, shout out to the Hangman. But I wonder if Swerve really feels this way. Because Swerve was coming off here a little... Now, listen, Swerve is good at his job, but Swerve was coming off a little. He was like, listen, man, if I would have had, and, and I like the way he put this. He said, if I would have had the opportunities you had, I would have took it and ran with it and been the first black AEW world champion already. And the fact that he didn't say I would have been a world champion. He said I would have been the first black AEW world champion. So that's saying something. Now. Swerve said, listen, man, you, you've gotten comfortable. You got your little contract extension. You, you the, This company was built on your back. You were one of, uh, he wasn't one of the pillars, but he was, I, I don't believe. But he was like, this company is built on your back. You were doing everything you needed to do. You were AEW World Champion, AEW Tag Team Champion. Back when the tag team division was fire. I don't know what the hell happened to the tag team, tag team division now, but back when the tag team division was absolutely phenomenal, he was like, you were on top, and then you got comfortable. Now, here we are. So, he says, I don't know what you're doing, man, but I don't got time for this shit. He said, you want to match? He said, you want to match with me? You can go to the back and get it, but right now, I don't have time for this shit. And then he says, you know what? There he is, the same guy. That's going to have his wife and kid watch him. What did he say? He said he's going to have his wife and kid. Like, he talked shit about his wife and kid, basically. Basically, Hangman walked back and he said, I don't, th I don't know who told you such and such. And he got up and Swerve's face. But Swerve, one step ahead, Bruh. had the machine, Brian Cage, attack him. Hit him with a, I think, a brain buster and on also a, the drill claw. And that was all she wrote for the hangman. And Swerve just knelt next to him and watched him. The thing about Swerve is, I think Swerve is right there. Like, Ricky Starks, I think, was made with that strap match. I think Ricky Starks is made. He also cut a good promo in the show. But Swerve is right there. It's not like Swerve is not. Because, you know, you got the top guys, the Danielsons, the Moxleys, the Punk before he left, the Omegas, the Takeshtas floating around the top close to it the um who else is top right now uh you got those guys at the top you know the elites the ftrs and then you got the middle the middle of the road guys the middle tier guys i think swerve is right there swerve is right there uh who else is another guy like govara govara oh jericho obviously top guy swerve is right there govara is right there Andrade, I think, is right there. Uh, the House of the, the House of Black, right there. The acclaimed in that middle, right there. I think a lot of those Darby might have taken a step back, but Darby is like bottom of the top. I wouldn't call Darby like a mid middle of the road guy because people love Darby Allen. But I think Swerve has the potential to break into that territory like Ricky Starks just did. But it's all in the follow-up the future is in the follow-up wwe always messes up the follow-up they give you the great story and then once they reach the mountaintop they don't know it's like they have writer's block they don't know how to write shit tk now the writing style has changed over the years it's four years old it's evolved aw and that's fine but what i will say 
is that Swerve might have a point. He said, how is the Hangman on the pre-show, on the biggest show in wrestling history, most paid attendance ever, but yeah, he's not on the main show. He's not fighting to get on the main show. To me, that's stupid. Stupid. So, Swerve might have a point there, but Swerve, if this feud goes well, now, is it going to be Hangman? I don't know. But if this feud, if they have a banger kick-ass match, maybe full gear around there. Well, that's a couple of months away. So, I don't know how you get to full gear without having these guys have at least one match. But I like this pairing, man. And, and I don't know. Maybe, I don't want to do 50-50 booking here, but maybe Swerve wins with some shenanigans. And then... Hangman gets his win back without the shenanigans. Or maybe Swerve wins with the shenanigans and then Hangman wins a DQ match. I don't know. I'm thinking WWE logic hole booking here. AEW doesn't really do things like that, but I like it. Then we had the main event. Nick Wayne versus Darby Allen. Christian Cage came out in the middle of this match. And Darby Allen basically beat Nick Wayne by trying to rip his arms apart. It almost looked like a fatality move. You grab this arm, you grab this arm, you put them together, and you kick the person's neck in until you break their C1 vertebrae. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Nope. But this match was great. This match was great. The only problem I have here is what the hell is Nick Wayne doing competing for a title? <laughs> Why is Nick Wayne in this tournament? This could have went to somebody else. Now, nothing against Nick Wayne. He is very, very talented. He has a very, very bright future. And he's smooth in there. And he's only going to get better. God damn it, he's 18. But what did he do to earn a spot in this tournament? You could have had anybody. Like, I know TK loves his... Tournaments and I love tournaments, so I'm not gonna sit here and shit on it, but I'm just like One his tournaments are too damn predictable Because it's like you you can see the brackets and two What did why is Nick Wayne in this tournament? I mean if he wanted to have a match versus Darby you could have just had him have a match versus Darby I mean Darby didn't want to kill him with the coffin drop so Nick Wayne they had a series of uh, reversals towards the end when Nick Wayne tried to hit him with the sliced bread pin. I mean, there was a lot going on in this match that, you know, you could have flushed out and did at a later date. Could have put somebody else here and just, if Darby was going to win anyway. But, you know, Christian Cage comes out and starts talking about people's fathers knowing that they passed away. So I guess it is what it is. But this was your AEW Dynamite. And Dynamite was a good show. Was it a crazy, oh my God, look at, no, but what I liked about this show, a lot of story progression. You can never go wrong there. Story progression. So with that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. You can catch me again on, what's today, Thursday, Fridays, on Saturday night, Sunday morning. Catch me again for what the wrestling we will be looking over smacketh of the down and collision because there's no more pay-per-views we will not be talking about cm punk thankfully hopefully so we will see what happens with that being said i'm out everybody be safe i'm off this peace